Welcome, welcome and congratulations. Um, we're so excited to see you be in person. Some of us are online. Hello and welcome. Um, I am Christine Nelson and I'm gonna spend the next, we'll see how many questions you have. So 30 to 50 minutes um, learning about the Batten School and the academic program and hopefully answer all the questions you might have or your parents might have. And, and if not, you can uh, send us an email later. Again, I'm Christine Nelson. I am the Assistant Director of Ac um, Undergraduate Academic Programs at the Batten School. And I will be walking you through, um, again, the academic programs and the major requirements. Um, I have been at Batten for, it'll be five years in April. So I do have a little bit of experience of helping students graduate under my belt. So you're hopefully in good hands. And again, I hope to answer any questions you have. This is what we're going to cover today. And again, if you have any questions that aren't up here, feel free to let me know. What is academic affairs? What are we doing? I'll explain a little bit about that. At the Batten School, we'll go through some of the curriculum and the sequencing of courses. Talk a little bit about the major, what's different about being at the Batten School versus the college. Um, also talk about some of this academic and enrollment information. What if I want a second major or a minor, some um, academic standing issues, study abroad, some echoes. So we'll hit, uh, as you can see there, several items. And then I'll point you to some resources that hopefully you've seen a little bit online. And then we'll have a Q&A. Does that sound good? All right. Academic affairs. We oversee the academic learning and the teaching at the Batten School. Um, everything from hiring faculty and working with them for course scheduling and syllabi to actually scheduling courses and making the um, schedule for the fall and spring each semester. Um, helping enroll, get you enrolled if you need assistance in that. And also I actually serve as your advisor. So we're here for advising and um, anything I'm missing. Oh, and in Mar May 2024, we'll hope to help confer your degree and get you a diploma. So that's what we're here to do to make sure you stay on track and um, have all the resources you need to get there. We also develop and assess, uh, um, assess the curriculum. So we not only have the BA, you're probably aware we also have a minor for undergrads. And then we do have um, uh, master's program in public policy and some graduate students who are in dual degrees with um, other graduate programs uh, across grounds. And then just basically and underlying everything, we want to promote an intellectual curiosity type of student who's going to go out and solve the nation and the world's problems, correct? Oh, here we go. So who are we? You've met me. Here is my information. If you need it, I'm also in the Batten Student Portal available for advising, I think in a week or two after spring break. Um, joining me is Katie Strait, who's the Assistant Director of Graduate Academic Programs. So she advises all our master's students. And she joined us this fall. And then Dean Amanda Crombie is, uh, heads our, our little team and is another resource to ensure that you um, get through our program successfully. So welcome. I'm calling this the Batten Island. Actually, Dean Crombie had this lovely illustration that I'm stealing from her. After being here five years, I can steal things from her. Um, the college is a very large school at the University of Virginia, as you likely know, as your second years. That has a lot of departments and majors. We have one major. Um, other schools have one major or maybe three, School of Architecture. And so the college you want to consider is like the mainland. Um, when you accept Batten and say, I want to be a Batten major, in August, you officially become a Batten student. And it's sort of like you took out your passport, you got a visa, and now you live on the Batten Island. So the rules and procedures and policies of the college actually don't apply to you anymore. You're a Batten student. I'm ripping my mic off. Okay, hold on. Um, because we haven't traveled in a while, I just get excited talking about travel plans. We're on an island, isn't that fun? Okay, so you will not have an association dean anymore. You have Dean Crombie, you have me. Um, 
we're here for any questions you have about enrollment and graduation requirements and such. What you would go to other schools for is if you do have a second major or minor, their rules apply for those um, majors and minors. But overall things to do with academics and getting you graduated, any questions you have come to us. Because I know a lot of students will go fill out a college form and then they'll try to turn it in. They'll say, you're, you're a Batten student, take it to Batten. We also don't like a lot of forms. So we'll talk about different ways we can um, make exceptions and make sure you're getting um, everything that you need in SIS without a lot of forms. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the curriculum. As it says up there, we do have 14 courses. They're all three credit courses equals 42 credits. Just throwing in there, you also need to do your general education requirements. So in the next two years, if you haven't taken any Baton courses, you need to take these 14. And the curriculum was redesigned actually. So you're our new, new class, your fourth year friends or rising fourth year Baton students um, actually fall in a little bit of a different category. So don't necessarily go to them for what should I take in the fall because some of the classes are different than what they took last fall. And um, they did not see this. So the new curriculum is designed to kind of fall under these four core, the core nine core classes fall into these kind of competencies. <coughs> There's some foundational courses that will build on the prerequisite of the intro to public policy. There's some analytic courses that continue to build on Econ 2010. Um, there's three leadership classes that um, obviously are part of our name and what we're hoping to develop in you as students. And then experiential courses that engaging policy communities is actually one of our new classes that will be, I believe taught this fall. And then capstone will be the final, your final semester. We'll look at the sequence of, of these in the next slide. Um, what has changed is a little more flexibility in the kind of things you study. I'll move so you can see me. And, and being able to target policy areas that interest you. So we used to have three special topics courses. We now, you now will have five. So that does equal 15 credits, which is how we get to 42. And if you are interested in say, education policy, you can take Batten classes that relate to education policy, but you might also find that there are a couple of classes in the School of Education and human development that um, you are interested in. And in that case, as long as we'll get to this again, that they're at the right level and that they deal with policy and leadership, you're welcome to apply or fill out a form. We do have one form, a couple forms, but this form online in the Batten Student Portal, just to say, can I count this as a special topics course? And if that's approved, then again, you can have two of those outside of that. So five special topics, Courses too could be taken outside of Batten, doesn't have to be. They can all be Batten mnemonics. And by that, I mean anything with LPP something that is not one of your core courses. Um, and that is two, 3000 level or higher, which we'll get to in a minute. So this is the curriculum laid out kind of fall, spring, fall, spring. <laughs> we will send you these slides, but go ahead and take a picture if you'd like. <laughs> so as we mentioned, there's 42 credits which is still as, as with most of the college or all the college, 120 credits required to graduate. So that 42 is part of the 120. And then again, your general ed um, requirements that hopefully most of you have fulfilled a lot of those. So next fall, you would take behavioral sciences for civic leadership. That used to be, we had some students who could take that. I know it's been full in years past, so maybe you've already taken that, then that would free up a slot for you to do something else. Um, engaging policy communities is a new course that will be offered. And then research methods and data analysis. So interestingly, if you know any Batten students, they will be taking that um, next fall as well. So we will have several sections for you to choose from. And you'll, we'll be with some fourth years, which will be kind of interesting and a fun year for all of us to experience. And the only time that's gonna happen because we're changing you know, when this is sequencing. Um, and then third year, there are two core, uh, third year spring, sorry, two core courses. And then you see fourth year has two each semester as well. And you'll see the special topics uh, down on the bottom. And again, those can be taken any semester. You may have already taken a course that will count and fulfill a special topics requirement. So um, 
depending on where you have space, if you're trying to finish out a second major or minor, um, you can adjust when you take those. Um, so special topics, I've mentioned this a couple of times, I just wanna be very clear because Batten actually has a couple of classes that don't count towards special topics because they're at the 2000 level. So for it to count towards the major, they do need to be 3000 level or higher and related to public policy and leadership. So obviously anything in our school, 3000 level or higher, as I said, all automatically counts. Um, if, it, if it's a, something you're interested in in the planning department at the School of Architecture or in the education school, as I said, there's, you know, or in politics or ec economics, assuming you're not a double major there, um, then you can fill out the form to see if it will count towards the special topics. And if it is, then I go in and adjust and you'll then see it in your academic department. Um, we do want approval. Um, there are some that are already approved and if you enroll in them, you'll see that they pop un under your special topics. And I will point you to a list on that when we, the advising email comes out of how to find out what, what will automatically count. We do like one is actually com law one. So that will fulfill as long as it's not being used for something else. Um, it counts as an outside of Baton special topics course. If you do have a pressing question on a particular slide, we can, we can ask questions along the way, but if you may, it may be answered as we go along. So if you're something you don't want to forget, please feel free to raise your hand. So the analytic course, for those of you who are, do have a strong economics background, or maybe you have declared or will declare a, a um, second major or minor in economics, our, our economics of public policy and research methods and data analysis are very similar material to um, Econ 3720 and Econ 3010. And so you have the opportunity to substitute out of those classes if you got a B or higher. We don't want you to be bored. We want you to have that opportunity to look, look at other and take other classes that interest you in your policy area or even just interest you um, that are taught by Batten. And so because we need the 42 credits for the major, it's not replacing it, it's not double counting it, it is substituting an extra three credits of special topics in place of. So we say, oh, you've got that material, great. You still need the 42 credits. So again, we it needs to be a B or higher, B minus is, Maybe you haven't quite mastered it and you'll want to take it again. And, and again, our courses have a slightly different focus. Some students have actually chosen to take in them, even if they've gotten a B. Um, most people who get an A don't, <laughs> but they want to do something else. Um, so it is up to you. I usually ask I'll, if you've taken it and you want to at, um, be proactive, feel free to email me or, or schedule an advising appointment. Otherwise, I usually run a report each semester to see, okay, we're teaching research methods in the fall, who has taken um, Econ 3720 and gotten a B or higher, and then I'll email you and say, do you want to take the substitution of the special topics? And I'll make that change and just if you say yes. This makes sense? Okay, great. So you could end up with six or seven special topics, um, which means you could really focus on some interesting courses. All right, I do want to clarify a few things just because sometimes People get confused or we forget because, you know, it's Tuesday after five and gorgeous out and I really want to leave. Please finish up quickly. Um, so while we're on the island talking about the major, I want to make sure you understand a few things. First of all, the Batten major has to, has to be your first major. Unless there is one, unless you are interested or are planning to declare a youth and social innovation, a YSI second major or major. Um, feel free to talk to me or to Anne about what that would mean. That's the only major where you can be first major YSI and second major Batten. Otherwise, again, you're on our island. And in that case, just to confuse matters, you're on the education island with a Batten second major. So again, you're not in the college. Um, you're, you're operating by each school's um, policies and requirements. So there are some things to consider there. So if that is in your future, be sure to talk to one, one or both of us at some point and we can talk about what that looks like for you. Secondly, I mentioned, I'm talking about the econ classes. 
that you need the 42 credits at bat. If you, and why we substitute special topics versus just saying, oh, you've had econ. It's because we can't double count any classes. So these 42 credits at the Batten School for your major are 42 distinct credits that aren't being used anywhere else. Except <laughs> when the Batten School um, major was proposed, there were a lot of students who were in a global studies major as well. And so there's an agreement between global studies and global studies only that six credits can be double counted between both majors. Okay, and we can talk about which it gets very confusing because they start taking some of the our classes and I'm like, wait, you can and I have to take them back, but that's more than you need to know. But we do need to make sure you're meeting both requirements and only six are double counting. And again, this is the only case and it is any they keep adding one. So anything that falls under that global studies umbrella. What does not double count, I'm going to make pretty clear because it, it can be confusing, is if you're in a global studies minor, then there's no double counting. Okay, it's just for second majors. What else do we have here? All right. Hopefully, once you join, you're going to be excited and you're going to stay and we're all going to be great and changing the world in two years and getting fantastic jobs. Sometimes people come to me after the semester and say, ah, I think I'm going to drop the Batten major because they have a second major. Again, if you recall, we left the mainland and we are now residing on the Batten Island. So you can't just drop the Batten major, nor can you just drop to a minor. Because um, if you ask Courtney, our minor is a very competitive application <laughs> as well. And so there are numbers involved and seats and classes and that sort of thing we have to keep in mind. So it's not not like at the college where I'm an econ major and a foreign affairs second major, I think I'm gonna to drop to a foreign affairs minor. Um, and they have a form and you do that, but you literally have to go back to the mainland. So you, you do have to apply to transfer out of the Batten School, just like you applied to be accepted and we're gonna transfer you in if you accept, okay? Um, in the same, I, so I've linked to these, we'll send you these slides. So anything that looks like a link is a link and you can click on it and see what the rules are. But hopefully that three, we don't need to deal with. Because we're all gonna be awesome and love Batten. Okay, four, general age education requirements are the same that you have now. Yes, because you joined Batten in your third year, we don't want to say, okay, we have our own requirements and now you have to fulfill these. Um, so, Whatever you chose when you entered your, your first year, if you're an Eccles scholar, if you choose a forum, or if you're in the new college curriculum, I think those are the only choices, correct? Then the college has said, you can, ex you can use our general education requirements, Batten. So it's the one weird part, like you're on the Batten Island, but we take the colleges. That said, it means they are also in charge of them. Um, so Batten coursework actually only fulfills uh, the literacy requirement, the second writing requirement. If you, for some reason, haven't taken a second writing requirement, that will be fulfilled with our curriculum. And then due to some of our courses, the quantification, computation, and data analysis, if you still have any of that remaining, three of those six credits, the Batten, obviously, research methods class will fulfill. So, but this, this is all the disciplines or all college classes, even college students who try to get a Batten class and approved have not been approved. Um, so again, because it's not a curriculum we developed, we have to kind of abide and accept and transfer their rules over. So we can talk if you have any questions about some of those requirements, but again, whatever they've said is, is what we accept. So. It gets confusing because people want to um, sometimes appeal. And so they appeal to the college and the college says that you're a Batten student. So you do appeal to me and we can see if there are anything we can do. But again, we defer to the college rules. So that's um, what I'm gonna say about that. Does anyone, did it confuse anyone or making total sense so far? Might be sharing too much. All right. And I'm gonna reiterate again, the timing of our courses. Our fall courses are only taught in the fall. Maybe I didn't say that, but that's why we have the sequencing. And our spring courses are only taught in the spring. Again, we're a small school. 
uh, we have to kind of limit it that way because that's what we, uh, how we can um, schedule courses and get you out of here on time. Um, and no Batten core courses are offered J-term or summer. Sometimes there might be a course that Batten does teach, um, J-term especially, that you could take that would be a special topic or obviously we'll get to some study abroad issues you can, um, or information and you might use one of those for special topics, but in general, there are no, well, in truth, there are no Batten core classes that can be taken outside of the fall or spring semester. All right, that was a big slide, that's why I broke it up. Let's talk a little bit more about some academic information here. Um, to remain in good academic standing, again, a link that goes to the undergraduate record of what that means to be in good academic standing, but I've spelled it out here as well for you. Our Batten BA students have to complete 12 credits, which is full-time. So be full-time each semester. Um, uh, earn a minimum grade of C in all Batten core courses. So those nine courses that I said fell under those competencies, if you don't get a C, you have to retake the course because um, you need a C in the core classes, classes to, um, to actually fulfill our major requirements. We also, to stay in good academic standing, you need to earn a GPA for Batten courses, so that's core and special topics, of a 2.5. And in each semester, have no more than one grade below a C minus. Um, again, it, you're not, we're not telling you to leave the school. We're just saying you'll be on probation, it's, um, and we'll need to work with you to make sure you can graduate um, successfully. So and make satisfactory degree progress, meaning you're fulfilling the requirements and, and heading towards having the 120, the 42, everything you need to graduate by um, May in two years. And then to enroll in the seventh semester, uh, earning at least 84 semester hours. So that's good standing. This is a nice brief slide. Um, is there a credit limit at the Batten School? This is one where, you know, the college has some good policies, so we, we mimic them. And so we do say 17 is probably enough for most of you um, to take in a semester. However, if you said, hey, Christine, I want to take this music class or I have this ROTC, so it's sort of like it's extra, not very heavy academically. Um, can I take 18, 19, whatever? Um, you would appeal to me directly at my email. We don't have a form. Um, or we could talk through um, an advising appointment. So know that that option is there, but don't look for a form. <laughs> we will limit paper where we can. OK, student records. This is just, again, because you're now on Arla Island, we want to make sure any documentation and everything in CIS is accurate. So if somehow you happen to be looking and say, oh, the college never entered my transfer credit for this, or I didn't get the AP credit. Um, just meet with me, send me a documentation to make say this is not showing up in CIS and, and I'll handle that. If you do end up declaring a second major or minor from another school or the college, um, that form comes to me. Obviously, we are doing email a lot more. Um, if there is a physical form, drop it by my office, which is in the basement here in Garrett Hall. Um, I, I like to say you, you're responsible for your academics, although I do tend to check up on you. Why aren't you enrolled in this class um, each semester? So do pay attention to your academic requirements report, even if for some reason you're, you do not choose to come to Batten. You know, make sure you're doing what you need to do to graduate. I believe the CIS IT team now made this degree progress report. I haven't seen one, but I think it's easier to understand and read, but that should help you as well keep track of what you need to do to, to graduate on time. All right, this is less about double majoring and minoring than it is about being flexible and open to different ways of doing this. If you do and intend or have already declared a major that will become a second major or a minor is interesting you, that you need to apply for or declare. Um, you've seen our curriculum. There are certain classes taught certain semesters. Some other rigorous programs may also have certain classes taught certain semesters that maybe they overlap with one of ours. Um, we typically have two sections you can choose from, but let's just say one section's full. 
which our wait list does not operate like most because everyone's taking the same classes. So keep that in mind as well. You might need to get creative earlier than you thought. Um, if a section's full, you need to take one and it conflicts with a class you wanted for your second major. Again, maybe you need to choose a different class that semester. Maybe it starts getting so tight, you say, I, I don't think I can finish this second major and you do ask them to drop that to a minor. There are a variety of, of situations that happen. Just, I know you're UVA students, you wanna get all the accolades and all the degrees and all the, it, it, um, all the, sorry, transcript notifications, but it is one degree. And if you're at the Batten School, it will be a Bachelor of Arts. And it will be a Bachelor of Arts, no matter if you have two majors and two minors, which we do allow, by the way, or <laughs> one major and two minors or one major. It's the same diploma, okay? So be flexible. I think the last two years have helped us to um, be able to be a little more kind to ourselves and treat our mental health with priority and our physical health and um, have friends and have activities outside of academics. Um, consider a J term or a summer class if there's something you need to fulfill either for Batten or another major or minor that um, will help you do that if you truly want to and you're running out of space in a normal semester. Uh, we can again overload or talk about that. You know, if you've been doing 15, but maybe you need that one extra class, which will take you to 18 to fulfill something. Let's talk and um, we'll see if we can approve that. And then again, I've already mentioned dropping maybe a major or minor. Study abroad. Who wants to study abroad? Oh my word, that would be amazing. Okay. <laughs> If you're looking for the fall, which we need to talk soon, um, I'm not sure because you're not technically a Batten student to the fall, whether the college or whoever signed your forms, probably. But we should talk anyway, because as you saw, there are three, possibly three core courses you're gonna need to take fall 2023. Um, but if you've not taken any Batten classes or very few, maybe one special topic, J term or summer might be the best option for you versus a full academic semester because as we've discussed and you've seen, um, it is, you do have nine core courses you need to get through and then five special topics. However, if you have taken some, you can fulfill special topics while studying abroad. So it's not like you're not getting zero Batten credit. You would, you could be fulfilling special topics credits or <laughs> filling a Spanish minor or, you know, there are classes that fulfill other majors and minors. So that might be one way you, you knock out some other requirements. Um, note, because of that sequencing, if you're gone in the fall, you likely would have five fall classes your fourth year fall. If you're gone in the spring, you would have four your fourth year spring um, that would have to move from your third year to your fourth year. Um, I would say third year spring might be, might be, I'm just putting that as an ideal because the fall, again, there are three core courses if you haven't taken civic leadership and um, it's a time of bonding and kind of feeling a part of the school. So again, it's not the end of the world if you can and want to and are able to study abroad next fall. Uh, but just in thinking of the culture at Batten and what you might want to add to that with the study abroad experience, it might be good to start the fall here and especially with those three core courses happening. Um, anything else? Yes, we talked about that. You can make an appointment with me and once you are on the Batten Island, I have to sign any transfer credit study abroad approval forms. So um, hopefully we will have talked before you bring me the form, but if not, you're, you're free, you're an adult. I will just sign when they need to sign. Quickly touch on Eccles. We've mentioned that again, if you are an Eccles scholar, that is a college program, but we'll accept the fact that they waive the general education requirements. Okay, so I, I do have to code something. I think you can still you can still do social things with them, but it's not, it is their program. So you're not officially in CIS an Eccles person when you come to the Batten School. But again, I can put something in there that says, so if you see um, general education requirements and you're an Eccles scholar, just remind me 
there are four, there are reports I can do to find you, but it, it would be very helpful if you just came to me and said, I'm a knuckles, can you put that back in? Um, and then Phi Beta Kappa is up here as a honor society. Um, sometimes it's mentioned with the Eccles because if Eccles aren't getting the breadth of the liberal arts um, because they don't have the gen ed requirements and sometimes it can impact um, this kind of rigor of that Phi Beta Kappa is looking for. So just know that and maybe, you know, try to take a few extra classes if, if you haven't already. Um, but this is a prestigious invitation. If you get this, it is the top 12% that right? Yes, of the fourth year class and 4% of third year class. So they request who's in your top, I send names, and then they review all your um, coursework. It's not at all any activities you've done. It is all kind of your, the breadth and depth of the scholarship and, and the grades you have gotten. So if you do get an invite from that, I could look, maybe you think it's spam. It's not. <laughs> and it's pretty prestigious. And um, chat with me about whether you should say yes to that, which um, other honors and awards you can receive. Dean's List, I think, was reinstituted for the fall. They're a little behind on figuring that all out. Um, last year, it was put on hold due to all the credit, no credit options. But for in the Batten School, to be on the Dean's List, you have to take 15 credits, graded credits, in a semester and earn a 3.7 GPA. So again, with no Fs and no credit, no credit um, as part of that. And then Commencement honors, which are when you graduate, um, are strictly with cumulative, your overall cumulative GPA. And so you can see these ranges here to get distinction, high distinction, and highest distinction, which is put on your diploma. Um, so that's kind of a nice one if you have a goal of <laughs> meeting that, know that it's there. Uh, finally, resources. You hopefully have seen our student portal. Yes, no, maybe yeah. part of it, <laughs> the admissions side. Um, we have a new logo. We're going to start seeing it and um, hoping that it will just get you to pay attention to this fabulous wealth of knowledge that is at your fingertips. So it's at midnight, you go, what was it Christine said? It's not there yet. Wait a couple of days. But um, <laughs> you can go into here, the Batten Student Portal, and look under FAQs or academics and find this PowerPoint or find actually what is in there is the curriculum for the class of 2024. And you can look at the courses and when they're required. It's got that colorful little map on it too. But um, this is also where you make appointments, advising appointments, um, not just with me, but with career. They will start accepting appointments from you this summer to talk about internships and then in the future for jobs. So, um, We'll be using it to assign tasks to you, which alerts you via email. Um, so it's an attempt to be a one-stop shop. I know there's a lot of things you'll have to sign into. If you take classes in other schools, they have their own version of CoLab, et cetera. So we don't want it to be a burden, but we do want it to be a resource and a place where when you have questions and Christine's on vacation, you can go to. <laughs> or you don't want to wait for an email, or you're talking to your parents about this program and you want to show them some things, um, um, go there. Okay, so that is it. And what did we do? Look at that, 538. What questions do you have? You won't be the only one. Let's, I saw your hand first. Uh, is there a distinction in the study abroad program that this it has college electives that are eligible? Are those the types of electives that the uh, special topics courses? Yes, yeah, we could definitely use. Um, we're probably a little more liberal on because you have to be creative with study abroad, but politics for sure would be something I would say, as long as it's 3000 level, like there's some intro, like get to know the country kind of courses, no. <laughs> um, enough of an academic rigor, but yes, that definitely would be a special topic approval. Um, oh wait, I saw her hand. Yeah. Well, I came into TA with prior language, so I am already a declared major. Is it possible to switch so that I, because it said that it is, has to be my first major, even though I already have a declared major? Yes, previously. yeah. If you already have a declared, this is more like cis stuff you probably don't know or care to know, but if you've declared a major, unfortunately, what happens when 
they in bulk make all the Batten students Batten majors, um, which is great. So I don't have to do it one at a time. Um, but when that happens, it kind of wipes out whatever you have in there. Again, I can go back in and see you had a, a, sec a major or, and maybe even a, a, well, you can't have a minor say the major, but um, I likely will try to run that report before they make you Batten students. But if somehow I miss you, yes, just email and say, I was a French major, can you make me a second major? And, and yes, you don't need, if it's already in CIS, I don't need to see your form. If for some reason it hasn't made it into CIS when they make you a Batten student, then I would need your declaration form. Does that make sense to everyone? Um, yes. Um, if you're going abroad this summer and have already gotten your like <clears throat> class of the school side of policy, like in the I sorry, the foreign affairs major, is it possible to like get the new school side add in? So are you planning to not be foreign affairs at all or that it would be? Yeah, I mean, if like I I didn't know. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. I understand. Um, maybe make an appointment or email me what was approved and we can talk. Yes, likely whatever they were going to take, as long as it's 3,000 level and above, could be a special topic or two. I don't know how many you're taking, but does that make sense? Yeah. It could be applied. Yeah. What will happen is they'll send that form that you got signed to me because it's, yeah. Someone will enter it, but if I need to do some things to make it fulfill our requirements, we can, that can be done. And if you want to know before you go, then definitely make an appointment with me and just, we'll chat, okay. Are there limitations to what your second major can be, especially like within the college? I don't think so. Um, as long as you can complete their requirements and ours and without double counting, okay. no. Microphones, if people online can hear me. Yes. Um, if you didn't hear the question, it was like, is there a limitation to what you can major in in the college as long and with Batten? Usually the conflicts are like with PST or PPL just because they're very structured and we're very structured and they're very small and we're very small. Uh, so that's usually where the limitation lies is you have to take senior seminar at 9 a.m. and you have to take RMDA <laughs> at 9 a.m. Um, so that's usually the limitation there. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Well, classes that come towards the back major, for example, introduction of public policy, not count towards social entrepreneurship. Uh, so the question I now need to repeat as I'm realizing there's people online. Yeah. Do um, the question was, can intro to public policy account for other things like um, the SE minor? That's a really great question for Laura Toscano, um, because that's a different program. Well, so... And so uh, Amanda about, just said no double yeah. counting with SE. No double counting, but that's a prereq now. It's not... So I... <laughs> We'll circle back, but and and we'll let Andrew know who's in the SE minor or considering it. So Laura Toscano is the advisor for SE minor, and um, while it can't double count, it is now no longer part of our 42 credits, right? But it's changing numbers, so that's where I'm also hesitating because it's now going to be a 20, 2200 versus 3200. Um, so we'll. Is there, go ahead. Amanda says intro can count since it's now a prereq. Right, <laughs> there we go, yeah, <laughs> there we go. So yes, um, again, but that is a great question in terms of I'm taking this class because we offer some social entrepreneur classes or a lot of them. Um, if you're using them for the minor, they can't be used for the special topics. So typically, but yes, that one can count now because it's not part of our 42 credits. Um, I have two questions. So the deadline to accept is in is next Friday, but if you were to accept and then like later this semester something happens, like is it impossible to retract your acceptance or like at that point are you like bound? <laughs> Can you hear me? No. Hi. Repeat it. Repeat it. So the, so the question was, uh, <laughs> if you were to accept your Batten major 
And then later on in the semester, if you wanted to change your mind, would that be acceptable? Is that right? Yes. What I would prefer you would do if you're weighing other majors from an admissions perspective is simply reach out to me and say, hey, can you extend my <clears throat> deadline for accepting? Because for so many reasons that Christine described, it's really hard to change course once you um, committed to coming this way. So just shoot me an email. I'm Anne, uh, if we yes. haven't talked before. Um, and then I just have a second question really quickly. Um, so if you're double majoring in something like in the college, for example, and then come the fall, like you said, it's, you cannot drop the bat majors. Even if you have another major in a different school, you still cannot drop the bat major. Correct. You would, if you suddenly were like, I only want this one major and it's not bad. Yeah. You, you have to apply to transfer back to the college. Even though you're already in the college because you're a major. You're not in the college because you're in the Batten school. So again, it's- You're not in both schools. You're not in both. You're just no. majoring in a different one. Correct. Just in Batten. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Yes. So yeah. Consider it, it's not, but consider it like a minor. I mean, you are in the Batten school. You're on our island. So everything else you do is just, adding to your transcript. <laughs> so it's, you need to transfer back to the college if you want, if you no longer want to be in the Baton major. So. Yes. If we wanted the minor too, but we got the BA, is there a way we can to like rescind that application? <laughs> That's Courtney. Yeah. That's a minor question. Go ahead. Wonderful question. The question was, if I also applied to the minor and have accepted the BA offer, what should I do? Email me. Uh, I'll put my email in the chat for anyone online. Um, and I will happily withdraw your application <laughs> from the minor. Again, as we said, very competitive program. So someone will be very happy that you're not in that pool anymore. <laughs> anyone else? Someone might have your same question. Anyone online have a question? Yep. This is again this coming summer study abroad, and this is very in depth. But I have, like my application deadline for a specific program isn't until April. So if I again I have a second major already, and then I'm dealing with that, and who do I bring that form to? Do? So another study abroad question, and the form for this summer. So again, technically you're not in the system a Batten student until August. Also, so you don't suddenly get billed the Batten tuition um, this semester. So, and if, are, are you wanting the credit to go to the second major? The second major, it's very language specific. I got gotcha. So then just do the form with them um, in the college and they will probably enter the credit if you're back before August. Um, if not, they'll send it to me and I'll enter it. That's fine. But it's since they're, since you're getting the credit for their program and you're still technically in the college, just deal with them. I don't need to sign it. Amanda concurs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. So um, the question was about enrollment times and which, by the way, I don't set, that's centrally done. So I know people think maybe I do. Um, every student has to take these courses and we know that. So we have enough seats for everybody. That's kind of where the flexibility comes in. If the schedule you, so plan a couple alternative schedules if you have a later time and I'm, I'm sorry, but for our classes, they are limited to our majors, the core classes for sure, um, except those the minors have to take. But then we have enough seats for everyone. That's again, why we're very specific on, you don't just drop or drop to a minor because we schedule our classes so that you all get what you need. You might just have to be flexible on timing. That did happen this semester. With, um, and, and we're learning every semester that other, um, classes, including her own, like a lot, there's a lot of 3.30 to 6, like seminars and um, things that might interest you that if we have one of our sections is at 3.30, then a lot of students seem to have conflicts, but you can only have so many classes earlier in the day too. So again, it's flexibility. Can I take this class I wanted to take, but at the same time, a different semester or, you know, just being flexible. But yeah, you will get, and believe me, 
I actually had a parent call me who said, my daughter can't get in the classes she wants. He did not tell me her name. Um, and I said, it will work out. It, it, it always does because you need the classes to graduate and we make sure it happens. Yes. Uh, when you become a bank student, should you expect your financial aid to change at all? Uh, the question is about financial aid, and that's going to Anne. Oh, <laughs> Courtney keeps turning the mic off on me. Um, so financial aid will continue to be administered centrally by student financial services. And the general rule of thumb is um, the higher tuition cost of Batten will be factored into your aid. So you're not, it's not intended um, to increase your out-of-pocket costs. That said, there's if you haven't met the full cap for loans, that could be kind of factored into the um, into the increased cost. So, what I recommend is students directly reach out to someone in financial aid, and they can tell you exactly how shifting your enrollment would affect uh, your tuition bill and any aid you receive. There is a question online. The Batten requires 60 credits by matriculation. I dropped a class for my second major and will be short three credits. I plan to take a summer term class to receive those 60 credits before fall. Is this okay? There were a number of students in this bucket actually that were just one or two credits shy of reaching 60 for any number of reasons. Um, I noted those students and I'll share that list of students with you, Christine so that we know that those extra credits need to be factored into your academic planning go forward. So you're okay. <laughs> we'll get, oh, yes. Well, were there any specific study about the program that was kind of stuff to do for us? Yeah. Um, well, we haven't had anything happening the last couple of years, but um, what do, the question was about do Batten, students take specific study abroad opportunities. Um, it varies, again, depending on what second majors are, if you're minoring or you want a language. We did have several go, unfortunately, in 2020. Um, so like Valencia and some of those programs and um, they have to come home. But we, again, it's, it depends what you're interested in. As no is the bottom line because of the number of students that go and then so many programs that exist that there's not really a this is typical for Batten. I will say we have one May master program, which is Dominica, which the um, social entrepreneur minors would be probably be interested in. Um, and then a J term class we're hoping goes this next J term. Um, in Vietnam, which we did have in 2020 it went really well. Um, and hopefully that it's kind of an ecological environmental sort of bend, which is fantastic with a professor who used to live in Vietnam who's now in the global studies department actually. So um, those opportunities, you know, I plug away or, or the Batten School does. Um, but again, there are other, just there's just so many fantastic opportunities. I, uh, several look at the Oxford program in the summer. There's some direct credit courses that can, um, count, including a Batten mnemonic one. So those are the ones that I kind of know about. Other people have done their own research and they just come in and say, can you sign this form? And usually it's because of a language or again, just a place they want to go or an experience. Um, and the courses are sort of not for Batten. And so I don't necessarily walk alongside of everybody. But again, ISO has so many opportunities that's anything that's politically bent policy, there's very few leadership classes out there, but um, abroad, but if you happen to find them, great, but anything with government, I mean, we're going to take as a special topic, but again, a lot of people just either do it for um, other majors and minors. So. Yes. So when's the um, study abroad um, on like the study abroad website, is it like an or like, like there's like a bat and thing. Like yeah, I dropped yeah. that. Um, so I just was curious, like, cause I was interested in doing one of them, um, but I was just curious to see like, if they would only apply for special topics, um, courses or like would potentially 
Because I know for like the econ one, like when, if I took something that was like similar to that there for something, like could I take a different special topics when I came back? Rarely, so again, probably econ, and there was a student who found like our research methods that literally was our research methods class. Our, and I will have the faculty look at the syllabus and say, do you think this is comparable? Um, but it's very rare to find something that kind of fulfills. Those would be the two that could be replicated elsewhere. Um, so yeah, it's typically special topics. And, and again, that student didn't end up studying abroad. So I've not ever had that literally happen um, where we've fulfilled a core class. But again, yes, if it was an econ, you know, intro to, what are the courses? The microeconomics, um, yeah, then, we could talk. Okay. If you have a question you don't think applies to everyone, we'll let we'll let people go enjoy this beautiful evening and I'll I'll stay for a few more minutes to answer questions. <laughs>